Okay, so we're going to be repairing this HP 20S, which is very similar to a lot of other HP scientific calculators. First thing we're going to do, okay, this has the, the screen problem, where you have to push down on the bezel in order to make contact, in order to turn it on or do any of the numbers. We're gonna remove this, the battery cover. I've already taken out the batteries. So there's these four rivets here that we're going to pop. And then there's an additional four rivets that are right here at each of these intersections. We're gonna go ahead and pop the, the top ones first. I'm just using a pair of fingernail clippers, just the blunt end here to get underneath. There. Right there. I'm gonna go ahead and apply pressure until we get those rivets to pop. Okay, so these two are popped. Go ahead and do the same on the other side. Get it right down close against the rivets. And it looks like in this case, these rivets here, which actually held the, the interior parts of the calculator to the plastic frame, uh, were already gone. So that caused the frame to bend up, so just watch that. Right, so work down the edge here. And get to these central rivets. Right, there's one. Two. Go from the other side. So I actually want to be under the this part, but I don't want to damage the circuit board either. And over here. And we pop those. Okay, so there's those four rivets that we just popped. There were those intersections I showed earlier. There's the holes that they were in. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the circuit board here. So the circuit board is held on by these four little twist ties here. I just want to make sure that I twist them in the opposite direction they were twisted. Of course, I might break them off. I'm going to twist them and then straighten up the tip so I can slide them out. Alright, so we should have all of those. Peeling that circuit board up. And there we've got the circuit board off. So again, it's these contacts right here which get either corroded or the foam that's underneath them degrades over time and doesn't push up against those and make good contacts with this part of the circuit board. So we're going to clean those contacts. You can use rubbing alcohol, but I've also got just this electrical contact cleaner here. And a Q-tip. And we'll go ahead and clean them. But I think I'm going to replace this foam first. So I'm going to peel this up carefully. Get underneath it.
and go slowly so it doesn't tear. It tends to fall apart. And what I've got here is just some mounting tape that I found. And it, I discovered that uh, <clears throat> two, two layers of this is about the thickness that I wanted. And it's pretty firm foam. It's got a little bit of give, but it's pretty stiff. So I'm going to go ahead and cut two strips of that to length. And I'm going to peel off the backing on the, I'm going to put my slightly wider piece on the bottom, peel off the backing, and then stick these two together. So that's going to be my replacement foam right there. I left the backing on top here because I don't want my um, contact tab to stick to it. Let's go ahead and try to put that down inside. Well, I probably could have made that a little bit narrower, but that's okay. That'll work. So now we'll go ahead and clean off those contacts. clean off this here too while I'm at it. I don't think I need to do anything with this side. And on the circuit card itself. Off those guys. And off those. If I need to do anything here, they're probably just ground plates. All right, so now we can go ahead and stick this back together here. Got my battery plate lined up. And I want to make sure I've got a really good pressure down on it before I start twisting these. that to be firmly anchored in place. Okay. Let's go ahead and test this out before we put it all back together again. And 
it comes on. So it looks like we fixed it. Aside from this slight bending here of the, the bezel, which I'll try to repair. Okay, and last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my X-Acto blade. So on each of these divots, there's a little lip around the top. So I'm going to trim that off, which I can do partially with my X-Acto blade. I'm going to do the same to these guys here, but I've also got a Dremel tool that will make it much quicker. But I can at least take off these inside parts that I won't be able to reach with the Dremel. these pieces back together. It should snap together without too much problem. There. That looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll stick back in the batteries. And it holds together. It's not going to pop apart unless I uh, force it again. And there we go.